Welcome to our 2024 roadmap conversation. I'm going to keep this informal and brief. And let me just start by orienting us a little bit. Don't worry about this giant mess that you see. This is our Miro board, which is just a giant whiteboard on the internet that we've been using to organize for quite some time, going all the way back to October of 2022. We were officially founded in February. So February 2, 2022 is when we were officially founded. We started working before that, but I started tracking it with this process then. The sticky notes are green. Green means it's been done. These are things we worked on, iterated on. Lots of old videos here, some of which the links probably don't even work anymore. Every single month we've been picking different, uh, different uh, version numbers of our organization while we work on stuff. They're all basically meaningless for the most part. And all we really can do is keep working one day at a time. How does Moses make his coffee? He brews it. Sorry, that's my random. I'm sorry, we're moving on. So uh, what we're at now is version 0 0.9, artificial deadlines, where we are all focused on the last minute panic of trying to deliver this home Bible demo to you. The yellow sticky notes are things we're currently working on. Those are the category uh, categories of tasks. The orange sticky notes are current tasks we're working on. And then the green things are things we may or may not do in the future. A lot of the way that we work, and this is part of the process of working on stuff that we and no one else we can think of have ever done before, is we can't set firm objectives. Rather, we have to set a heading and just say we're going in this direction. We define the structure as loosely and as, well, we, we define it as strictly as we can, but often we can't define it that tightly. And so we just need to proceed, start iterating, start prototyping. And only by doing that for about two years did we get enough of a grasp of the, the possibility scattershot plot graph technique thing. What am I trying to say? I need more sleep. I'm trying to say that we only by working and iterating for about two years did we even figure out what sorts of things might be done. And then from there, it was a matter of trimming that down into what's possible and then trying to make something. So um, right now we are in the process of finishing and adding improvements to the demo. So the demo that you have access to right now, let me pull that up. If you don't have access to this demo, you'll have access to a demo very much like this soon. We're in the middle of putting some final polish passes on this before we release this uh, very, very soon. But this is something that we're going to continue to improve all throughout April and all throughout May so that we can make sure this is a good quality experience, not because we want this demo to be the full product that we're working on, but rather by making this very good, our goal is to learn how to make everything else we're working on also just as good, if not better, and take all the learning we get from seeing how you all interact with this so that, uh, and, and we want to incorporate that into the full product. So anyway, that's what we're working on for the next two months. You can expect to see new changes, new improvements, and all that stuff very soon. The demo section down here uh, might have new things added to it. We can come up with an idea and then implement that idea in a rough form rapidly. And so the amount of time it takes us to think of a, a concept and then implement it sometimes is only a matter of weeks. So we'll probably think of ideas for things we want to include in this demo that we haven't even included. Uh, a timeline, a genealogy of Jesus and Matthew, those are a few other ideas just tossing around. So keep checking back. You'll see more stuff in this demo experience, and we hope it blesses you. And our goal, of course, is to keep working on the full product, which is going to be the Home Bible. The Home Bible is maybe going to look something like this. We've been iterating on the design for quite a while. I think this is an older version, so don't don't hold me at that. I think these are both older designs. If you have anything that better that you'd like to help us with as far as design goes, please reach out. But we're, we're making do with what we got, and so far it's turning out pretty good. Here we go. I found it. It'll look something like this. This is kind of the idea. I'm going to explain more about what the Home Bible is intended to be very soon. But first, let me talk about the improvements that we want to make to the demo in terms of what might be eventually in the full product. So first of all, the demo starts with what we call the stack. The stack is a vertical expression of the Bible. But our goal is to use not just the Protestant formation of the Old Testament, 
but also do one for the Tanakh. If I go to the roadmap, the Tanakh version of the Old Testament looks something like something like this, where you have it'd be in three sections where you have the law, the writings, and what is it? I've forgotten. The law, the Torah, the Nevim, and the Kedavim, the 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 Torah, the prophets, and the writings. So it'd be awesome to turn the stack into a Hebrew version, and then we made this vertical expression of the Bible because we wanted to have something that could work well on mobile, but of course we want to make a horizontal version of the Bible, because that'll be fun, and look more like a bookshelf at that point probably. But then we also want to make a map-based layout. We've made those versions in the past, but then it would look more laid out kind of like this. Uh, let me pull up an old version just so I can show you. We're going back maybe a year ago or this is probably more than a year ago. Uh, I'll pause while I find this. Here we go. So this is back in March, oh, it's a, a year ago almost exactly. So a year ago we prototyped this version of the Bible which will be in a map format. Let me show you this. Nope, that was the wrong link. It was January of last year. Let me show you this. All right, so this is an old prototype we made a while ago just to kind of map this out. Let's load all the chapters of the Bible here. Perfect. So now we have all the chapters of the Bible and we have them all mapped by how much content is in each chapter. You can quickly see that Psalm 119 is the biggest chapter in the book this way. And this is not going to be the full product because one of the reasons is this is a lot of a lot of stuff on the screen and, and a lot of phones that are lower end hardware would melt. So we have to make stuff that we think is good to start, but then we have to uh, figure out how can we make this be performant and work across all, everyone's devices, not just on uh, a more powerful computer like I'm, I'm using right now. So three different layouts of the Bible there will have the vertical, the horizontal, and the map. Not all of that may make it into the demo. We probably will just wait to integrate that into the full product. So we probably won't wait to put all of that in the demo, but that just shows you a little bit of where we're going. And of course, there's a million expressions of the Bible that you could artistically create. We're just going to make a few, and we're going to make them with the Protestant and the Hebrew Old Testaments, which if you don't know, the Hebrew arrangement of the Old Testament is the exact same content as, as the Protestant arrangement of the Old Testament. It's just in a different order, and <clears throat> it's probably the order that Jesus and his disciples had. We, say, we see that because Jesus, at one point in the Gospels, says to the Pharisees, the blood of every generation from Abel to Zechariah will be basically laid at your feet. I'm paraphrasing. I don't quite recall the context, but the point of that is that Abel and Zechariah are the first people and the last, the first person and the last person to die in the arrangement of the Tanakh, which does not, which is not the same arrangement that we use in the Protestant canon. And so it's just nice to have more options. Either way, same Bible, same content. It's all God's word. So after we've gone forward with some new arrangements of the Bible, we will at the same time in parallel be working on a full reimagining of the 2D Bible. This is going to be a reading experience designed to be much more familiar to what you probably already know, where you're going to have highlighting, we'll have ways to read, but we'll have shared user presence, probably something like here where you can see you know, how many people are in the Bible with you and where they're at, and you can follow other people and they can follow you. We've made versions of this stuff in the past, so it's just a matter of dusting it off and making sure it's all working well and giving ourselves the time to make it great. But that's going to be a Bible that is designed to be lightweight, designed to load very fast, designed to be easy for a whole house church uh, to use at once, and designed to be something that we can create resources around so you can create reading plans, uh, quizzes, any, any kind of 2D content uh, that's going to be possible in this kind of an environment, and that's going to be called the page. The 3D environment of what we're working on is going to be called the canvas, and the canvas is going to look something like... This is just a concept, so bear with me here. Let me pull up an, an old version of it here. Here we go. So, and, and I know I'm kind of just jumping all over it, and I'm showing some old prototypes, so please bear with me. I'm going to tie this all together in a way that hopefully makes sense at the end. But the canvas is our 3D Bible environment, and here, let's just pick anything. Uh, here we have every single word as an individual bot, 
And this is something that enables a lot more creativity and expression as far as dragging words together or creating uh, all sorts of interactive experiences. And all, there's just a million things I could describe. You know, one of the ideas I want to work on that we should do is maybe like a Bible platformer where you can take a Bible verse, turn it into an obstacle course that as your character jumps on each word, it's saying that word, and then you're memorizing scripture by, by playing a, an obstacle course. I'm not saying we're going to make that this year. That's just the sort of stuff that you could do with the canvas and could do in a way where it'd be easy for one kid to make a Bible obstacle course for another kid to jump through, and that would just be fun. And of course, it's building familiarity and biblical engagement, which is the goal. So this is the canvas. It's not ready just yet, but here we're going to have all sorts of stuff like quizzes and other tools like mind maps and other things too. And it's all going to come together in one product called the Home Bible. So let's go back to the Home Bible. So we're going to have what's called the canvas and we're going to have what's called the page. Where did my drawing go? So here we go. So just imagine with me for a second and you're going to have to use your imagination for this one because this is not done. But imagine I had a card about this size and on one side of this card on my camera screen here is a QR code. And that QR code says the page. This is the Home Bible at the page. If you scan the page, you join the Bible in the 2D version of the Bible, and you can read along with other people, but it's a very familiar experience. There's just collaboration and some basic features. But what's unique is that if you scan this QR code to this home Bible, it is going to take you to your own unique home Bible. It's only you and those near you who you give this QR code to. No one else has access to it because every single QR code in, this, in the home Bible will be unique to you and to your family so that you can maintain tight control over it. Now imagine on the other side, and this again is just an example, but imagine there is a separate QR code and instead of saying the page here, it said canvas. On that side, if you scan the QR code, it launches you into a 3D version of the Bible. That's gonna be kind of like the demo, but a, li a bit more full featured and will have more options. And everyone can scan either QR code and you can join in 2D or in 3D and our goal will be to make this easy and to make different ways to, to, to guide you and to allow you to guide others through the scriptures at whatever end of the spectrum you want to be at. So a lot of people, they just want the traditional Bible experience. We want to make it easy for them to have that experience and to share that experience with someone else with no technical skills required. I'm going quite far down the roadmap, but our goal is to make this and abundantly easy and simple, where all you have to do as a user is scan a QR code or click a link and suddenly you're in the Bible and anyone you share that link with, they're in the Bible with you and it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. We're focused on small scale user groups of the family, the house church, so I don't know what the upper limit of how many people can be in this experience will be before it breaks, but I'm imagining in the 10 to 12, 15 range maybe. We'll have to see. I don't know. And we have a lot more to figure out to get there. But our goal is to get as far down this path as we can this year. And realistically, if we have the resources and the talent uh, stick with us, then I do think we could accomplish all that and more this year based upon our, pra our past trajectory. That seems very reasonable. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll try. So that's the 2024 roadmap. If you would like to be a part of the journey, then, well, first of all, you already are because you're, you're here, so thank you. If you would like to be a part of the journey in more ways than you are currently, then please consider hopping into our Discord community and providing feedback, helping us do QA, helping us bug fix, helping us test. If you have feature ideas, we'd love to hear them. All that stuff is very welcome. We're, we're going to stick to doing this almost exclusively in Discord for now because it's an easy way for us to work and it's what makes the devs' lives easier. And then we are trying to make the people who are in this community be able to work around the clock in many different countries. And if we can just stick to keeping the, keep the conversation in one spot, it makes everyone's lives easier. So that's what we're doing. Go ahead and hop into this community if you want to join. If not, please sign up for our monthly newsletter here. Please consider donating to us so that we can continue this work. And if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can do so by visiting our community site and then clicking on the About AO Lab stuff, and you'll see our contact information here. And of course, you can reach us on the website as well. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey, and we pray it blesses you, and we pray that you can find a way to help us help you help
help everyone. Not a strong close to this video, but you get the idea. All right, thank you.